All right, I'm going to do a video talking a bit about math camp, and uh, there'll be some tips for just other first year stuff. I think a lot of people worry about math camp uh, going in, and it's not a big deal, really. Um, but it, for people who at least haven't done PhD courses or something like that, it can be pretty tough, I think, because some stuff's different. And also, you know, I'll just talk about what to expect and some material that might help with preparing or uh, studying for some of the stuff. So uh, I think most people probably know what Math Camp is, but sometimes it's unclear what exactly uh, Math Camp is, because it's like, why do they call it Math Camp, right? Usually, Math Camp is, is a course that is actually going to go on your record and count towards your first semester courses. Uh, it'll be called like mathematics for economics or mathematical methods or something like that. Uh, it's generally taught uh, three or three or four weeks um, leading up to the start of the first semester. It will not go into your semester. Uh, sometimes when you register for it, it says the dates are during the fall semester, but this is usually not true. Um, it's going to be very fast. You'll probably have two or three hours a day, five days a week. And um, there will, in most cases, be homeworks and tests. And again, it's going to count towards your GPA. The idea is that it's meant to prepare you uh, for the math you're going to need for your core courses. And <laughs> the accuracy of this varies. Uh, in my case, a lot of what we covered during math camp was not used at all during our coursework and um, yeah I guess I was kind of unfortunate it's not the fault of the teacher it can just happen because sometimes the teachers who are teaching it aren't familiar with the way courses are taught so you know take that with a grain of salt if you could talk to upperclassmen and find out uh, how what if you can find out what type of methods you're going to be using in particular this can help you deal with some of the stuff during math camp. Um, it can be hard for a lot of people. Uh, it can be really scary for a lot of people too, because uh, it's the first courses they're going to be taking at their program. And uh, some reasons why it's difficult is that you could be covering material that may be hard for you. It's hard for a lot of people, unless you have a really good math background. There's going to be new material, and a lot of it's going to be difficult, and you're learning it extremely quickly. The shortness of time is what's hard for a lot of people. You're going to be in class for probably three hours a day. You're going to go home work on problem sets for maybe another three or four hours, and that may leave you with not much time for uh, studying and actually absorbing the material, right? A lot of the time you're probably going to be trolling through uh, textbooks or stack exchange trying to find answers to homework problems, and unfortunately the incentives are such that this is what you, I don't want to say you should be doing it, but again, if you have homeworks that are due two days after they're assigned, and you are worrying about grades and doing well on this stuff, it's easiest to just look it up and expect you to learn it, you know, the day before the test or something like that. Uh, I would recommend resisting that urge, but obviously if you're that pressed for time, then that's kind of what you have to do. Um, some general tips, and I think these aren't, these don't rely, uh, these don't depend just on math camp. These are for mainly for your first year. One is that grades do not matter. Uh, for most people. Um, most programs will have some tacit understanding of what a what range of grades they can give. Um, in most programs it's almost impossible to get a C or below. Generally you'll just be ordinarily ordinarily ranked uh, and you know the people who are in the top third will get an A plus, you know middle third will get an A minus or a B plus and those who did pretty poorly will get like a B minus, something like that. Um, so I wouldn't take grades to personally, some teachers don't care at all. Some teachers may grade and actually give you C's. Uh, some of our professors told us things like, uh, view the grade as our probability of believing you'll pass qualifiers, right? You know, something like that. So in general, grades don't matter. Uh, don't worry about them too much. Getting 30s, 40s on tests is not uncommon. There's, it's, you know, for our macro final, the average was a 35, and no one really batted an eye at that. Um, in some cases, they will matter, right? Uh, if you're getting Cs, that's really bad. If you get all B minuses, that's probably a bad uh, signal uh, to anyone who sees that. It's, you know, 
your job employers aren't going to see it, but maybe the head of the department does. And uh, it's a signal from your professors that you probably need to do something differently if you're getting all B minuses. Um, and in other cases, they may matter if some departments have a GPA requirement for uh, maintaining funding. So again, just try to avoid getting C's and B minuses and stuff like that. But otherwise, getting a B is not a big deal. Getting a 50 on a test in most cases is not a big deal. Uh, it's more about um, the next point, which is going to be about being able to answer prelim questions. Uh, this is the main focus of your first year. You should be able to answer the questions that the people who write the prelims and qualifiers are going to give you. Um, in most cases, these will be the professors you have during your first year, so that means hopefully being able to answer their questions on their tests to the point where you are ideally above the course average. So, you know, again, if everyone's getting 50s, that's fine, but maybe you should shoot for trying to get a 60 so you can feel good going into the prelims. Um, don't, don't totally blow off learning material, but save the efforts at deeper understanding for the topics that you're at least thinking of specializing into. So, you know, I took metrics, macro, and micro. Macro was very hard uh, for myself, and uh, eventually I got to the point where I just didn't worry about it enough. I studied really hard and passed the prelim, um, and now I never need to study macro again, and I've forgotten almost all of it a couple weeks later. But I try. I made an effort to do really well in my courses for uh, game theory and micro theory because those are the professors I'm going to be working with. So pick and choose your battles with this. And one more general tip is that uh, the people in your cohort are going to be good at different stuff. Uh, there's no problem relying on other people. Um, you're going to be sharing answers. In some cases, people are going to be doing all of the homework and sharing it with everyone in the cohort. That happened all the time for different subjects. We had one person who was very good at coding, and they helped us a lot with the stats and that sort of thing. Um, so make sure you guys, if you're friendly with each other, then there's nothing wrong with relying on each other to, in some cases, do a lot of the work um, and help with studying and things like that. Um, the material, this is, we're back to math camp now. The material is, in most cases, you're going to have standard material, which is going to be real analysis, linear algebra, and dynamic programming. Um, most, uh, most of the notes I've seen online and people I've talked to say that you're going to have like maybe 60 or 70 percent analysis. So this is going to be stuff mainly related to optimization and you're going to have some basic set theory and you'll get into doing the Riemann sums with integrals and all that good stuff. Linear algebra, this is going to be about the only thing most programs cover that deals with the metrics side of things. Um, it's also going to apply to micro a lot and maybe macro depending on what you do. Um, the linear algebra may be a step above what a lot of people cover in undergrad if you didn't take a more rigorous linear algebra program. Uh, doing proofs with linear algebra may be uh, difficult for some people, so that's something you're going to want to prepare for. And then dynamic programming is hit and miss with how much people cover in different programs. Sometimes you'll spend a week on it, other times you'll spend a day on it. This, uh, for me, I think is the thing that was the most uh, lacking. I, if I rewrote the way we did math camp uh, based on the way most of my cohort dealt with the material during the semesters, it would focus mainly on dynamic programming um, because macro, I think, for many people is the hardest. Uh, but again, that depends on your, your kind of program. Some other stuff that some people cover is you're going to cover probability theory and some measure theory. Some places do stochastic calculus, and then optimal control, with which overlaps uh, sort of with the macro material. Um, try to get a hold of your lecture notes or the syllabus from your professor ahead of time if you want to study some of this stuff. Um, some general sources. Um, I'm going to link to some notes that I found online, and uh, I think there's one or two YouTube channels that have sort of math camps on them. Um, Two books that you're probably going to want. Most people will probably have the Simon and Bloom book from undergrad. This is good for brushing up on material. I would recommend if you're trying to spend a month brushing up on things, this is good, but it probably will not be rigorous enough or cover enough material for what you're going to see in math camp.
The De La Fuente book I think is a bit better. This will get you, this will have a lot of what you're going to cover. It includes some linear algebra, it includes some dynamics, and it has a lot of the standard analysis stuff. It's definitely more sort of encyclopedic than teaching you things. I think it came out of notes he kept for a couple of years as an under, or as a grad student, and uh, I definitely think this is worth buying. Some more sources for when you're actually in your program. Um, depending on how rigorous your real analysis is and your micro is, having Ox book on real analysis with economic applications is really good. Uh, sorry, this is blurry, but if you have, again, like a more rigorous proof-based macro thing, you're going to want to pick up the recursive methods in economic dynamics by Stokey, Lucas, and Prescott. And then just linear algebra, there's tons of books on this stuff. I like Anton's book. I discussed some of this in one of my other videos on just books for math econ. Um, you may want to pick up one of the more rigorous metrics books that covers linear algebra. Um, I think Hayashi has some decent stuff in his, and I think Green's book has a whole chapter on linear algebra and matrix stuff. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about the linear algebra. Just find something that you like that you can learn from. And then we'll just talk about some like strategies for preparing. Um, one strategy, I think this applies for anything, including math camp, is just applying like minimax. If you're taking game theory, you know what this strategy is. You're trying to minimize the maximum possible failure you can have for various topics. So I like to think about, you know, there's going to be 10 topics that you know you're going to cover. You want to sort of make it so you can get, you know, five out of 10 on any possible question you see for these topics. So you're going to have tons of material. A lot of it's going to be really hard and some of it's going to be new. So it's a good idea to make sure that you're really good at the easy stuff that you're sure is going to be covered. So you have basic linear algebra, right? You don't want to have to be relearning how to do matrix multiplication. You don't want to be reminding yourself what a determinant is or how to take inverses. Make sure you can do all that stuff on the spot and it'll make your life so much easier when you're trying to learn more complicated proofs using those things. You know, make sure you know what the, the standard norms are and you know, that sort of thing. Basic set theory is going to be used in all your analysis stuff. Make sure you know, you know, all the subsets. Make sure you, your logic is decent. And then definitely you're going to want, like, the basic proofs related to optimization. You know, you want, like, the Weierstrass theorem. You, you just want to be comfortable with this stuff to where you're not having to relearn this stuff on the spot. You don't need to go crazy on this, but you want to make sure that if you get basic questions on this or this stuff you see in the first couple of days, you're not getting blown out of the water and feel terrified. So I think it's a good idea to sort of, you know, maximize the worst case scenario. And that would be, you know, making sure you can get decent scores on the easy stuff. Another strategy is just, this is just more of a way of thinking than a strategy. It's just a general tip that um, during your first year, definitely focus on just being able to answer the questions you're likely to see on the spot. Obviously, if you need to build a relationship with a teacher or it's in your field, try to go above and beyond. But what matters most is just having the capabilities to answer questions on the spot. This, hopefully your professor will tell you, this is your main job. Your job is to pass qualifiers, and then after that, worry about research and stuff like that. Basically, you want to study to the tests. Try to get back exams from earlier professor, from early, uh, from uh, older cohorts. Get back exams. Find out what type of questions your professors ask, and study them. You know, make sure you know the material as well as you can, but you only have so much time and it's going to become tough managing that. Focus on answering questions that you have a high degree of belief will be on your tests. So you're worrying about creating capabilities for answering questions. That's your main focus. Another thing is just trying to avoid getting overwhelmed with material. You're covering a lot of stuff. It's going to be fast and most of it's going to be really difficult. Uh, Everyone who's in the cohort is there for a reason, and they probably know how to work hard, and they're probably relatively smart. The real differentiation, barring people who are sort of just not geniuses, but there's always going to be an incredible student around or someone who's just amazing at things. I wouldn't worry about those people. Uh, the differentiation with most uh, grad students is going to come from those who can manage their mental health and deal with stress. This is hard for a lot of people. This was hard for me in preparing for qualifiers. Um, probably led to me failing uh, the one metrics one uh, that I did not pass. 
and uh, it definitely hits you at different times for different students. Uh, for me, it was around finals time, both semesters, and you know you need to come up with ways of dealing with this. And the better, the earlier you can get a jump on developing good habits for dealing with stress, the better. It could be meditation or exercising and eating healthy or doing things with your friends. But for a lot of students, I think this is a real problem, and it's something you want to focus on ahead of time. So that's the end of the slideshow. I may do something more uh, like this later. I may do something related to qualifiers or um, maybe just general first year stuff. Let me know if you think it's helpful and I will post some useful links in the description. Thanks for listening.